What's good everybody? Welcome to episode 1.4 of my Bitwig review. Today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite things about Bitwig, which are the modulators. Now before I continue, I don't exactly know what every single one of these do, but I'm going to highlight a few of these just to show you how powerful these tools actually are. So before I go any further, let's go ahead and look at some examples with some patches to where I use some of these modulators. And if you don't know what a modulator is, it's basically something that changes a parameter independently of something compared to automation, where automation would be changed over time. So if there's an automation lane, it would kind of draw over the course of the playback button. Whereas with the modulator, you can kind of, uh, there's some play in there. On an LFO, you can set it to trigger, you can set it to play on its own, you can set it to play on the playback. There's a lot of different options that you can do but just let it be known that it allows you to change something potentially without having to touch it, if that makes sense. There's probably a much more accurate description for that, but yeah. So here's a bass patch that I made, and it sounds like this. got some artifacts on it that sound pretty cool but you'll notice that whenever I click on the little key thing over here you can see if there are any modulators that are active or not and one of the main ones that I always use is the random function because Bitwig doesn't have multi-stage envelopes yet I feel like this is the best alternative since most of the time I'm looking to resample anyways but you'll see this as a common feature through or a common thing that I do throughout almost all the patches that I make regarding bass so it's a lot of fun. And just imagine if I had a random function on every single one of these to kind of change in its own right. And it's cool too, because if you want, you can actually save these modulated, I guess, presets as a preset within the library and recall this anytime you want to use that again in the future. So the other example I have is just a bunch of <laughs> randoms on here. This is a patch that I recreated from one of Polarity's tutorials. If you haven't heard of him, go check him out. He's like the guru of Bitwig, to my knowledge, and he covers a lot of stuff regarding the grid. Basically, I recreated his patch and then I changed quite a few things to make it my own, but this is what it sounds like. So it's just a really cool ARP that's tuned into the key of F and all of these random functions are basically changing small parameters. So if you have something that has a modulator on it and you highlight this, what you'll notice is that, let me turn this back on and I'll turn the volume all the way down, is that whenever you touch one of these, it will show you what parameter is here. So in this case, this one is linked to this right here. So I'll zoom in on this and that way you can see that I'm doing that. But I can also change anything that's potentially <laughs> modulated mod that can change anything that can be modulated on here. And this will help show me a little bit easier. Now, when you have a huge patch like this, it's very easy to get lost within that. So try to kind of keep that in mind. But the other cool thing is that you can always come over here to the left side and recall whatever it is that's happening and change the parameters on their own in case if you get lost, which in my case, I already have. So with that, if I were to take something like say phase four, and pull up a specific preset. It could be anything. I guess I'll pull up one that I like. Andrew's Note is a pretty cool one. And I'll play a couple notes. You'll see that on here, there are some modulators that are already active. And so to my knowledge, this one is a classic LFO. This one is a polynom. This one is a, another classic LFO. This one is an ADSR. And then this one is our expressions, which we covered in the last video. You can have pretty much just about a, an unlimited number of modulators. All you have to do is push the key button or the arrow button. To me, it looks like a little key and push the plus button and you can add another modulator. So I'll cover some of these. If I don't know which they are, then somebody in the comments can explain them to me, but they're all kind of self-explanatory. So the four stage is kind of like a multi-stage envelope, but it works in four stages. So you can only do four different points of automation. Your ADSR and your AHDA DSR are pretty much your standard envelopes. The audio rate to, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's kind of like 
a note or sorry an envelope follower but it doesn't average the the sound audio sidechain you can basically send something into this to feed to this to change the parameter beat lfo is just a, an lfo that's synced to your time between beats here and here. The button is kind of like an on and off button. You can have more than one button if you like for different things. Your classic LFO has specific shapes on it. So the other thing too is that if you have something that can be changed, you have these different parameters here. There's just too many to go over, so I'm going to keep moving on. The next one is the envelope follower. So you can also have the amplitude of something basically change the expression as opposed to the actual signal. So it's a little bit different, but they're very similar in that way. Expressions we covered in the last video. The hardware CVN, I can't really cover because it works with hardware, but basically you can take the input of a hardware controller or something and change that in that sense. But I don't have anything to kind of modulate that with. Key tracking is it will track the pitch of whatever note you're playing and it will change the parameter accordingly. So if I wanted something to basically wobble faster, then I can set the key tracking to play higher and vice versa. So if I play a higher note, it'll go faster. If I play a lower note, it will go slower, kind of like phase oscillation. I actually use key tracking a lot in Faceplant if you've seen any of my tutorials. LFO is pretty standard. It's pretty cool because you have some other options in here to change the shape and the speed and all that stuff. Macro is just a set of four macros. A macro is a single macro. Math is basically taking the extremes of one parameter to another and then kind of doing any kind of math in between to kind of find a middle ground. So you can do like multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division within this. MIDI is like a MIDI CC. So if you want to map something to your controller, you can basically have that turn to a knob. Mix is pretty self-explanatory. You can mix one parameter with the other. On the note counter, this is kind of like something that you'll see in the grid where it will count in a set range for unique patterns. So if we go over here and we hit this button, then this will kind of play or will hit different values of the parameter over the counts that you set it to. The note sidechain is kind of like the audio sidechain, except it is responsive to MIDI. The parasequence 8 is an 8-step sequencer. The pitch 12 is kind of unique because depending on what note you push, you can kind of have it set as a different parameter depending on that. So like a lot of effects that you see, like the mouth and a lot of contact instruments use something like this. So that can be useful to you if you want to create a unique experience like that. The polynom is one another one that I'm not really quite sure what you can do, but I know that if you kind of change all these parameters over time, that you can create some kind of complex movement within these, kind of like what you see right here. So I imagine that you can map this and then map these to an LFO, because that seems like what seems to be happening right here. So it's just an extra way for you to create some interesting shapes. The next one is the quantize, which I'm not really sure what that does either, but it seems like you have some algorithms here and this might kind of lead things up in case if something goes out of sync, especially if you're using something within the grid. Somebody help me out there. The next one is random, which is what I use the most. By default, it will be set to square waves right here, but you can kind of pull this over to make things smooth. And then you can set the time and the, I guess the depth of this, and you can also set it to plus and minus or to just go from plus. And this is like probably the number one modulator that I use on just about everything. This is your typical sample and hold function, which is very common within the grid. This one is a select four. So this one, you can basically select between four different values and then kind of modulate those to each one. The steps I think is your typical step sequencer. The vector four is kind of like four different modulators and you use the X, Y pad to drag them between. The vector eight is the same thing except it's between eight different things. The voice stack you've pretty much seen from the last video, except you can use that as a modulator on its own right. So if you have something, if you have like a third party VST and it doesn't quite support the voice stacking on its own or it behaves in a different way, you can use Bitwig's version of it and it will kind of create unison on its own, which is kind of interesting. Then finally, the last thing that we have is an XY pad. And that's just basically where you set two values or two parameter functionalities and this will kind of morph in between the two. So as you can tell, there's quite a bit. I think that there's like 40 plus and there's obviously just a lot to get lost in. But to be honest, as far as like regular functionality goes, I usually use a four stage, 
an LFO, perhaps a MIDI CC or a macro, and usually the random. And those are the main ones that I use. Also the expressions, of course, for MPE functionality. But if you have the knowledge and the wherewithal to really make your sense modular outside of the grid, then by all means, I encourage you to do so. And really, sometimes it's fun to just throw a bunch of throw a bunch of these on here and just go and set it up and see what kind of sounds that you can get because that's really the only way that you're going to learn from these things in the first place. So yeah, I mean, the possibilities are limitless and it's really awesome that I don't have to go in and go into something like Max for Live and then map a parameter with an LFO and then do that. This makes everything super clean and I can hide it from my ins and outs this way. And the crazy thing is that you can modulate modulators. So if I want my random to modulate something on the LFO, then by all means, I have the ability to do that. And whenever I click out of this, you will see that this will start to move. And it's just a, a crazy, crazy, crazy open world thing that you can do to create some really interesting results. So I encourage you guys to just get lost in it and have a lot of fun with it. But that's all I got for you guys for this. The next video will be a recap slash review to a review covering anything that I might have missed. So if you guys have any information that you want to help clarify, then please leave that in the comments below. See you guys next time. Take care.